Translating your React app into different languages might initially seem really complicated, but don't worry, it actually isn't. Using libraries like i18next, it's actually quite easy. So let's take a look at how to use it. All right, so our goal is going to be to basically translate this hello world my name is Nichols app. And the way that it works is we've got the string hello world and we've got an expression that takes in a variable, in this case, a name. So first of all, we're going to need to head to this file here, which basically contains all the commands we need to run. So either you install everything separately or you just install all of it at once. And then it's just going to take a bit of uh, time and then it's going to be done. And now we can actually start implementing already. So first of all, we're going to need to create a new file. It's going to be called i18n.js. And this file is, first of all, going to i18next.use. This is basically the preparation we need to do. So we need to initialize i18next to be able to translate our stuff. And first of all, we're going to need to initialize it for React because you can of course use i18next for a lot of other stuff, which is the reason we have this React i18next module here basically. And then we're gonna need to use the next thing already, the language detector. So what the language detector does for us, which is actually quite, uh, quite nice, is that it allows us to basically detect what language the um, browser from the user is set to, so that the user doesn't need to configure their language on our site. So they can basically just work in German, English or whatever automatically because our site is going to read that from the, uh, from the browser of the user. And that is going to be imported from IAT Next browser language detector. So we're going to use that. And then we're also going to use the HTTP API. So import HTTP API from IAT Next HTTP backend. And that's basically so that we don't need to define all our um, translations inside of this JavaScript file because that becomes really messy really fast. The way we're going to do it is we're actually going to add translations to our public folder so that every language has its own separate file so that the user also doesn't need to fetch every translation from every language, which at some point could grow quite big. Now we're just going to format this right here. And that's basically everything we need to use. We now can init everything and we'll basically say, okay, First of all, we are texting the language. What if we don't have that language? Like somebody uses Arabic, for example, and we don't have that configured. Well, we can define a fallback language, which in our case is just going to be English because, yeah, that's the most realistic bit. Most of the world speaks English. Then we also have interpolation, which um, normally isn't required in IAT Next, but um, what we're going to need to do here is say escape value false, because normally this would prevent cross-head scripting attacks, but because React already does it for us, um, we actually don't need IAT Next to also do it because that would just lessen our performance. So we'll just turn it off. And now there's just one thing left to do, which is to export default IAT Next. And that's basically it. So now we can head into our main JSX. And here we're just going to go ahead and say import dot slash i18n. And now everything is ready to be used. So let's head to our app.jsx and say, okay const t equals use translation. And what this is, it is basically a function that will allow us to use keys to translate our stuff. So basically we can now go ahead and replace this hello world with t with the code greeting. And now we can go ahead and actually create our first translation. So to do that, we are gonna need a public folder first of all, because Vite by default doesn't create one. And now we can go ahead and say, new file locales slash de slash translation dot json and then we can create the next one already which is en slash translation dot json so we've basically got one translation for german and one for english so to test it out we'll start off with the english one so this is basically just json so we've uh, defined our key which was greeting and the translation behind it is hello world. Now we'll head to the German one and say greeting is hello Welt. And now if we just head back to our site, then we should see hello world. So it basically pulled our translation from the public folder and it found out, okay, this browser is configured to use English. So I'm gonna use hello world. If you now head to my break, uh, Brave browser, and reload, then you're gonna see it says Hallo Welt because my browser is configured to be in German. Now, the next thing is translating this my name is Nicholas, which we need to um, be a bit careful with because there's a variable in here, which we definitely want to be able to use. To do that, we can head back to our translation for, first of all, 
and call it I am. Let's call it I am. And that one is going to be ich bin for the German one. And we're going to add a variable in here called name. For the English one, it's going to be the same, only that it's not ich bin, but I am. And now we basically just need to inject that name here, and then we're basically done. So to do that, we're going to say, okay, T I am. And then we need to tell it um, what the name is. So in this case, name is just our variable name up here. And now if we head back here and reload, we should see I am Nicholas. And if we reload here, ich bin Nicholas. So that's how you would translate your React app into English, German, and basically whatever language you want. So how about you now learn how to speed up your React app by maybe changing to Preact, like I showed you in this video. So I hope you're going to do that. And I also hope that you're going to have a good day.